Welcome to Stave Draws. I'm Stave, a Dutch illustrator and animator. And in this video, I'm going to do a, a review of a book. And the book is called Layout and Background. An interesting thing about what I discovered in this book is that they first used to work with a two pack system and they used these packs for registration. So if you're doing animation on paper, you need some registration. And in 1935, they changed it to the five pack registration. And the book is just uh, showing uh, all the layouts and all the backgrounds in full glory. And there's no explanation. All the layouts you see range from 1928 until 2011. And it really starts out with very uh, simple uh, backgrounds and they were all done in black and white because all the cartoons in that era were in black and white. And you still can see some of the backgrounds here. So there's just a lot to see. And uh, what I discovered is that there was a difference between the layout department and uh, the background department because the layouts you know, were made because they had to um, see where the action of the animation would go. So they first needed to sketch out the layout and they're very elaborate. And the interesting thing is that you can see that the, the backgrounds also evolve. And they could test it out with the Mickey Mouse cartoons. But apart from Mickey Mouse, uh, Walt Disney also uh, made a series which was called the Silly Symphonies. And with the Silly Symphonies, they could really explore different worlds. And they also started out doing um, the Silly Symphonies in color. It was the first uh, animation in color. And all the backgrounds were painted with watercolor. And this is a very interesting thing to see. This is uh, from Pluto's Judgment Day from 1935. And here they changed from the two pack registration to the five pack registration. And on the left you see the layout and it also has some text to it. And these were remarks for the background department. And on the right you see check color with cell. So I checked this movie on uh, YouTube because a lot of the shorts of Disney are on uh, YouTube and I'll leave a link in the description so that you also can watch this scene from uh, Pluto's Judgment Day. I checked it out and there was animation on top of it because the, the, the cave-like cat also has uh, a jaw and a tongue that comes out and that's animation. So they needed to check that the cell color would be the same as the color of the background. There are also some uh, backgrounds of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and also the layouts. And I came across a layout and I just, um, I'm just gonna zoom it because it's across two pages. And there you see the red square and the red squares are um, the alignment of the camera. And you can also see some circles around parts of the background or of the layout and that's where all the action uh, and animation will take place. And there's just a lot of spreads. Here's a, a spread of uh, the dungeon of the, the witch or of the queen and it's just you know very beautiful and it's all done in watercolors and they changed it later uh, to working in gouache but you know, each picture had its own style. There's also some work of Pinocchio and they were also done with uh, watercolors and, and the backgrounds are very intricate and you see a lot of detail in it. So the book shows a lot of uh, different art from uh, different kind of movies, also from Dumbo. And also some layout and backgrounds from Bambi. And, you know, Bambi was painted. A lot of the paintings were done with oils. And here you see a little picture. And in the front of the book, there's a bigger picture. And there you can see that they really painted it with oils.
Here's a very big spread, and I'm not sure what movie this is. This is Victory Vehicles. And Disney Company also made some instruction videos for the war. And this is just one of a very big pan. And you can see that they changed uh, to a painting with gouache. Because the background and the style of the animations also changed. And they changed it to a more uh, vibrant colors. And they could achieve that with doing it with gouache. And this is from the, the 50s. And you know, in the 50s you see a lot of uh, illustrators also working with gouache. There's also some awesome backgrounds and, and layouts from Cinderella and from Alice in Wonderland. They used a lot of gouache in the backgrounds of Alice in Wonderland as well. The main designer of the backgrounds or of the style of uh, Alice in Wonderland was Mary Blair. Now I leave a link in the description box down below because I also did a review of a Mary Blair book and she was a great artist who worked uh, at Disney as well. There are some great uh, backgrounds of Peter Pan of, of London. And Lady and the Tramp. And here's some great work by Ivan Earl, and he did the backgrounds, or he was the director for uh, the backgrounds uh, for Sleeping Beauty. And here you can see a spread, and I think he painted this, and it's just very elaborate style. And there is a, a book of Ivan Earl coming out um, I think in the fall of 2017 and I'm really looking forward to a book about just his work because it's just amazing with the detail he paints. And there's 100 uh, Dalmatians and they changed their style to uh, the Xerox because the, the animation was done wasn't inked anymore, but they used a Xerox to um, ink uh, the sketches of the animation. And they also included the same style in the backgrounds of uh, 101 Dalmatians. There's also some art of the Jungle Book. You know, and each movie had its own style. Robin Hood. The Rescuers, Fox and the Hound, Great Mouse Detective, who framed Roger Rabbit. These have very vibrant colors. Oliver and Company, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. And that's a total different style. And here's a, a layout and a background of the Lion King. And you know, when you look at the layout, it's uh, very graphical, but when you flip it open then you have a spread and then you can see the entire scene and i think this is the opening scene of the lion king and when you just look at the artwork it's just amazing how they painted this it can be quite intimidating you know to see all these great artists who worked at disney but I more see it as an inspiration and that started me going and doing a lot more painting instead of just drawing cartoons. Here's the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hercules. The Art of Mulan. And that's a total different style as well because they had some Chinese 
uh, influences into the backgrounds. Here's some artwork for uh, Tarzan. And you can also see um, the foregrounds, and I think they painted this digital. And here's a background, and that was done on paper again. And then you can see the real lush, uh, well, it's more faded colors. And underneath you see um, the mixing of the paints, which is interesting to see. Here's some work uh, for Fantasia 2000. Emperor's New Groove, which also had some great backgrounds. Atlantis, The Lost Empire, and Lilo and Stitch. And what I really liked about Lilo and Stitch is that they went back to doing watercolors. And they, in the beginning, they had a real hard time uh, making everything in watercolor because when you paint something in watercolor and you make a mistake, you have to start all over. And, you know, they really looked at the Silly Symphonies and the older movies like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. They incorporated that into the backgrounds of Lilo and Stitch. So here you see a very intricate uh, background. It's a layout, but, you know, it's really rendered out with all the values. And on the right you see the final background. And here are some movies. Um, these were inspirational backgrounds, I think, because these were all done in CGI. So I think these uh, images never ended up in the final movie. And here are some inspirational work for Tangled, and that's also a CGI movie. And you know they did this digital, but you know the detail is just very uh, intricate. And here's a wonderful picture of Winnie the Pooh. Uh, that's the Winnie the Pooh uh, 2011 movie. They also went back to the style of the original movie, which is from the 60s. And they also used um, uh, Xerox technique. So they inked everything on a cell and then uh, painted everything with watercolor. And these are just amazing backgrounds. And in the end of the book, you have all the art credits. And, you know, sometimes they don't know which artist did what kind of background so then you just see Disney Studio artist and there's also an index with all uh, the movies so you can also look up uh, in the back of, of the book and then just go back to the book to find uh, a certain movie. These are just great books and very inspirational. Um, it's in the series because there's also a story and some other books in the series as well and they're just very well documented and I really love these kind of books because you know it is uh, much easier just to grab a book and just to get inspired by the great art of Walt Disney. So I really enjoyed this book and it's still available on Amazon and I'll leave some links in the description box down below. If you want me to do more videos like this please let me know in the comments. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles.